So I'd like to share with you how I overcame my depressions by using NVC. And I want to say that, of course, depression is a very complex term, a very complex thing. So I'm just sharing my experience and by all means, I'm no doctor. If you want to, you know, stop with using your medicines, please consult your doctor. I just want to share my experience so you can learn from that. I had a first small depression when I was a teenager, not knowing what it was. It kind of runs in my family. And not that I want to blame anyone for it. I had a depression when I was studying that was quite severe and was really, really scary. I got to a really low point of having like intense suicidal thoughts. Um, I had like kind of a cr more chronic, long, mild depression after that when I was working as a journalist in Amsterdam and I had a lot of things on my, on my plate. Um, my parents got divorced, my boyfriend broke up with me and I moved to Amsterdam not knowing anyone here, not having any colleagues because I was a freelancer, having huge financial struggles. So all of that, but yeah, I, I see it now as that that was not really like the cause, but it, it was a trigger for it. It was a trigger to feel lonely chronically, which is, I think, uh, has a big link to depression and also not being able to deal with all the thoughts, uh, all the judgments I had about myself and not even being aware of those. So seeing a therapist helped me, but somehow it always lasted for as long as I saw the therapist and not a lot longer after. So the first thing I did to cure myself was actually to start doing mindfulness. I got this book called um, A Mindful Way Through Depression by John Kabat-Zinn. If you haven't heard about that, I can really recommend it. Um, what mindfulness did for me is that you know, I have kind of this metaphor of that in that time I had just a bunch of repeating um, horrible thoughts and I picture them as kind of like if I'm lying in bed, it's like this group of uh, kids and like each kid represents a thought and they're like whining and crying and angry, uh, angrily, like shouting at me. And what mindfulness did was instead of thinking that I am those kids and I was following those thoughts, um, I got this distinction of there's me in that bed and there's those thoughts. So that was the first thing. And then it also showed me that I could look at those thoughts. So for the first time, I kind of turned my head and, and looked at, at these, um, the situation as just being a bunch of thoughts. And instead of, you know, the thoughts were a lot about um, the future and about the past. So it was making, the thoughts were making me feel anxious and guilty. And so instead of, you know, usually I would kind of look into the direction of where those kids were pointing, pointing at. So look at the past, look at the future, look at what you did, look at what might happen. And so instead of looking at what they were kind of pointing me at, I was just looking at them. And that, um, <laughs> I hope that's kind of clear, but for me it's uh, what it meant was that I was having this soft redirection time and time again at the now. Like I was just having these thoughts now. All of those things that the thoughts were saying, um, that was not happening. Because right now it's just right now. It's not the future, it's not the past. So that was really helpful. It meant that I just had this you know, in my, in what I took away from it, it's kind of like the now is digestible. The now is always digestible. Your, your body just takes what it can process in the now. So that's always doable, no matter how, how painful the feeling might be and that, it, that it's there in that moment. So that was helpful. Even with mindfulness, I fell back into depression. And looking back, I think it's because, you know, you can be in the now and look at your thoughts, but I didn't have a tool to to see how to take action. Like, where did I want to go, actually? That was not clear for me. And also how to connect with people, how to get out of this loneliness. So NVC helped me to see three things that I want to share with you now. So the first thing, um, so I was having these, these thoughts that were quite harsh and just looking at them was really painful. But NVC learned me that behind each of those thoughts is a need. So for example, if I would be beating myself up because I told, said no to someone about something, then I would be looking at the need behind my no. So for example, maybe I wanted to protect my energy. And I would also look at the need, you know, why does this thought come up? What's the need behind that? 
And then I would realize more and more that I so wanted to belong. I really wanted to connect with people. And so I was tending to, you know, take the extra step and maybe go over my boundaries. And so knowing these needs of, you know, belonging and, and taking care of myself and my energy were really lifting me up and really inspiring me to, to look for strategies to meet all of those needs. And the second thing is, I think, the biggest thing. I think MVC really showed me how you can have more honest connections, which was something I was so thirsty for. And, but I was scared to have it. And NVC taught me how I can create safety, how I can ask for you know, a listening space that is safe for me. Like for example, to ask for someone to not give advice or to check with me if I wanna hear advice. You know, all of those things that NVC teaches you um, in order to create this safe space to be heard, that was so helpful for me to actually speak. And also NVC taught me, you know, while doing that more and more, how human beings are so longing to see both, you know, pleasant and unpleasant feelings of other people, just because it makes them feel human. So that actually I was um, bringing a gift by sharing my shit, <laughs> let's say. I was making connections by doing that and people were really like, oh, I really enjoyed your vulnerable sharing. And I was like, really? Oh my God, <laughs> that's great. And so I got more amazing connections. Um, I have a really great love relationship right now. And uh, this guy also started to do NVC. My parents both did a workshop with me, which I'm really, really amazed by. Um, also, I started this women's circle recently in Amsterdam of uh, women that also do NVC. And that's really, really, really nourishing and fun. And um, I just have a lot of habits as well that are helping me that, that kind of stem from NVC. Like, for example, I have a weekly empathy buddy, like we listen to each other. Um, I do a daily check in with my partner, like, you know, how are we really doing at the moment and letting each other speak for five minutes in s s while the other person listens silently. Um, doing a monthly appreciation round with each other. And there's just this, you know, all of these habits and all of these people in my life, I see it as they are providing this this kind of network or this kind of like bedding for me that is so thick that I just, I wouldn't know how I would get a depression now. Like it's so, like if one thing would fall apart, there's still this huge, um, wow, <laughs> I feel really touched. Like this huge, um, yeah, safety network. That's I think what I, what I would call it. And it's not, it's not like I'm actually very aware of that all the time. It's just like by thinking about this video, I was realizing that that's really uh, something I built over the past years. What's what's really, really helping me a lot. <laughs> so the third thing is that um, I also learned how to use MVC for me instead of using it in order to be nice, which is very tragic thing I discovered and I see it with more uh, uh, people. I want to say women because I see it especially with women, but I think there's also men who do this. Uh, especially I've noticed with women who are very empathic, like myself. I, I love listening. I really easily have a sense of how someone feels. And this is just a talent, right? But it can also be something um, yeah, that's detrimental f for you. In my case, it worked like that that I was sometimes, you know, automatically listening. I was really like this super over empathic giraffe when I just started to do MVC. And um, yeah, what am I trying to say? Yeah, that actually what I discovered is that MVC is about connection and the way I read it was it's better to connect with other people than to not want to connect, to want to connect with yourself. Or if it's a specific person, um, it's not good if you want to connect with your current friends and not with this one person. It's more MVC, it's more noble, it's like, ugh. It's really, it's really something that got into my head and that I'm, um, that really took some time to overcome, to see that, you know, ultimately, deep down, no one would want me to listen or to connect if I'm not fully up for it, if I'm not fully there. And so, of course, it's painful when I don't want to connect with someone. And still, ultimately, I, I strongly believe no one would want it. 
And that was something I realized quite soon, but something else has helped me, another thought, which is more thought coming from abundance, a sense of abundance, which is about really, really believing that there's enough people for everyone. Just I really started to have this really strong belief that there's, you know, I don't have to carry the weight of the world. <laughs> like there's, yeah, there's just enough people for everyone. I just, when I say it, I just, it's just the truth for me. And I just want to, I would love it if more people would trust in that. That quite automatically, you know, if you're moving your attention away from a person, whether it's because you know you don't have the energy in general you know or or with this person you you don't feel safe that there will be the connection that you long for the safety that you long for you know whatever the reason to see it as something beautiful that then you just move away and actually create space for someone else to pop up for this person and just to trust that 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 will happen just to kind of like yeah, I, I guess my sec the second stage, let's say, of this thing, I started to add more love to it. It was it was less of like, I don't have to connect with you, you know. I'm just like, like kind of forcing myself away from the from the person, and now it, it doesn't feel like really I'm going away. Just like I decide who I spend my time with, and the people I don't spend my time with, I'm still sending them love or something. <laughs> it sounds really, really, really cheesy, but. Yeah, I think I've become more cheesy. That's, I think I have to accept that. So yeah, that's I think the last thing and maybe it's actually the most crucial thing because it's really about self-care. <laughs> and uh, yeah, everyone around you benefits from that if you do self-care. And so I haven't been depressed anymore for the past three years, which is like, yeah, I'm super thankful for the way I've been growing and the way I've been, been feeling lately, especially I've been feeling a lot of yeah a lot of thankfulness and a lot of happiness in my life um, and so it doesn't mean I don't feel sad or angry or frustrated or gloomy sometimes um, it just means those feelings last for as long as they need to be felt if you know what I mean like it just takes a little time to feel them and that's the time I take and that's all that's all it takes so it's in a way um, quite simple. 